Hello and welcome to another edition of Inside Outlook. I'm Tony Trungone, Superintendent of Pemberton Township Schools. Uh, the current edition will be in two parts. First will be with our Chief of Security, Joe Bowen, and the second part will be with our Supervisor of Transportation, Mike Press. But now for our first part, we have Mr. Joe Bowen. Welcome, Mr. Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Trungone. Uh, this is your, this is like your second and a half year, really your third year here at Pemberton. And could you give us an introduction for yourself? Sure. I was a, a police officer for 28 years before retiring in 2011. I worked at three years in another uh, school district as a security officer, and I came here in March of 2016. Great. A um, couple more questions, Mr. Bellin. Security initiatives uh, currently being uh, currently being implemented. Can you give us? A, I think there there are many going on right now. There are but can many you give projects us going on right now. Um, we have. Over the summer, changed our security measures in by adding uh, a total of 85 additional cameras in all of our buildings to bring our total to over 400. Um, we also are changing our access control system, which works in conjunction with our newly instituted burglar alarm system. So there's cameras, it's so like the high school, the middle school, and you have the elementary school. So. Uh, this is my third year. I know the high school was beefed up pretty well with cameras, and then the middle school. Uh, tell us about the elementary then. Is, is it more focused toward the elementary? Yeah, most of our elementary schools only had a minimal number of cameras that typically worked on the inside but not the outside. We've covered both inside outside with coverage that, that takes care of every building. So uh, in, in regards to new technology upgrades every year technology goes at such a, a rapid pace anything new yeah our, our new cameras that we're installing are on all high definition cameras uh, previously we used analog cameras so we're going to have 85 new high def cameras uh, and the existing cameras that we're continuing to use uh, are going to be recorded in a digital format which will help us uh, immensely in, in looking at video that's great and then the, the burglar alarms what's new about that what's well, sounds it, like every school should have burglar alarms. And they should. Uh, our district had burglar alarms for years. Uh, over the years, they became, uh, they fell into disarray and, and weren't used. So beginning hopefully the first week of September, we have all the, all the burglar alarms up and running and our buildings are secured. Uh, and then there's something else too. I think uh, panic alarms you mentioned too, right? Yes. Every building will have working panic alarms that go directly to law enforcement. And then the third thing I'm concerned about as a superintendent, you know, I'm a curriculum, I have a curriculum background, uh, but in regards to practicing the procedures for all the different types of uh, safety and security, is there anything new or what's going on in the buildings in regards to uh, school security as far as drills? Well, we're required by law to, to drill twice a month, one fire drill and one emergency drill. Uh, I think where we're going to go a step beyond that now is we're going to integrate uh, the fire department and the police department to be involved in our, in our drills uh, in all of our schools, maybe not every month, but certainly more than we have in the past. That's great. Any new initiatives? Like, I know, like we said, there's many things that are going on right now, so we want to open up the school year with the projects you just mentioned. Anything you look in the, in the future to uh, implementing? Well, I'd, I'd like to have all of our buildings be consistent in what we do. Uh, at present, two of our buildings have a visitor management system that uh, does a background check on people that visit the buildings. Uh, I, I hope in the next year or so to have every building have that technology. That's great, and I think our parents will appreciate that. Uh, and then one more thing, because uh, your job isn't just security. No, you're it is in, not. You're in charge of registration, too. So I've, I've noticed some exciting uh, new uh, facets of our registration program, uh, like you were open on Saturday. Yeah, one of the things that we recognized uh, from the last few years was that our registrants when they were coming in uh, were having to take appointments and those appointments as you get closer to the time school begins uh, become more and more frequent. Uh, parents, you know, busy summer, things happen and they try to get an appointment at the, the last week or last two weeks and it's hard to process that number of people. So what we've done is we've extended our hours during the week uh, on two particular days each week and then for the last two Saturdays we've opened up for four hours each Saturday. And that's something that I, I certainly think will uh, enhance next year. So the, the 19th was your first Saturday, August 19th, and now yes, this upcoming Saturday? This upcoming Saturday. What are the hours? Eight to four. Uh, anything with extended services to, our, to our, uh, our parents I love, so thank you for that. All right, Mr. B Mr. Bellin, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Now, one more thing, Mr. Trungone. 
I'd like to encourage parents throughout the district, if you have any concerns for safety or security, please contact me at my office, uh, extension 1009. Thank you. Again, thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to our next segment, which will be with Mr. Mike Press, who's the supervisor of transportation. Can I go to the sleepover? Lucy, I want you to promise me something. If there's any drinking, I want you to say, no thanks, not my thing. Mom! I promise you, your real friends won't care. Deal? I promise, Mom. They really do hear you. Did you pack your toothbrush? For tips on how to start the talk, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. A public service message from the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Welcome back to the second segment of our show, and I'm here with our Supervisor for Transportation, Mr. Michael Press. How you doing, Mr. Press? Very good. Uh, I've got a couple questions for you. The first one is initiatives you have in regards to student safety and, and security on the buses. Well, a good portion of our buses have cameras on the inside. Uh, the brand new buses that we have actually have four cameras on the outside. Uh, in the event that someone does pass the bus while students are loading or offloading, it's a digital picture. We get their make and model of the car, license plates, and a picture of the driver, which we submit to the police department. Uh, how about the, the cameras in the inside of the bus? Uh, on the in inside of the bus, there's a camera on the front bulkhead and a camera on the back bulkhead. One faces the children from the front to the back, the other one, of course, from the back to the front. Uh, starting next year, all the new buses are going to have cameras down the side that will be able to capture everyone in the aisle and down in the seat. That's, that's great. Um, now, I'm also here that we have GPS on our buses. It's a, I, I know it's, you've been, uh, pardon the pun, pressing for that for a number of years now. And so can you tell us and elaborate more about the, this GPS program we have on our, on our vehicles? Yeah, they just finished installing them. Every vehicle in our fleet will have GPS. Uh, we will be able to pinpoint every location of every vehicle within about 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, so that way, at no time will a bus ever be out of radio range or interference, whether it be weather permitted or, you know, we will always be able to know exactly where a bus is and answer any parent's question about how long until a bus arrives at their stop. What about the speed of the bus? Everything that you could want to know about the bus will be able to know immediately. And that begins this school year? Yep, very beginning of the year. It's, it's now the third week in, in, uh, in August? And I know where the bus passes, by the time this edition is going to be seen in, in our Pemberton Learning Community homes, uh, our parents will be receiving their, their child's uh, bus passes. And I, I, can you explain to, the, to our folks how that's created, all these bus passes? Well, with the just about 5,000 students that we have in the district, they're all, in addition to the mainframe computer that the school has, I have another program, Versatrans. And that takes the students, their locations, any classifications that they have, and through the computer, it routes the students on the bus stops without uh, overloading any buses. It keeps the occupancy of the bus within a safe parameter. And other than that, it's little tweaks now and then, but for the most part, it's all done by the computer. So uh, as far as we get calls about this bus stop, that bus stop, but I, as a superintendent, my lens is, you know, I, I hand it back to you and say, how does this fit? You have 53 kids in a bus, and I know, what I know is, it, they, you have to start a bus route, and it ends a bus route, and they have to get to school on time, so they're on time for school. So, I don't know how you do it. But you also want to make sure that the kids aren't on the bus longer than they have to be. And if you think about it, every additional bus stop that they make, is a few more minutes that the children are on the bus. So if you have 54 children on a bus, if everyone had their own bus stop, that would be 54 minutes just picking up children. So what you want to do is maximize and make the route efficient. Have the least number of stops with the safely with the students on there. So where each run, we try to keep each bus run about 40, at the most, 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, also, it comes to mind that the, all your bus drivers were trained uh, this past year with, with, uh, with like special ed and, and accommodations for our children. Uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on that? Well, in addition to the training that we do, 
Uh, the state has also mandated that every person who transports students, whether they be special ed or not, uh, is required to watch a training video, a half hour training video every year to keep the ideas and the uh, practices fresh in their mind. Uh, and like I said, in addition to that, uh, the transportation department, in, in cooperation with the child study team, formulates uh, training that anything that may come up on a bus route or a special ed van run. Uh, last question for you. In regards to, you know, we talked about the bus stops and trying to make it efficient, but there's a logic to completing a bus stop in a timely manner. And uh, you try to accommodate everybody, you try to make everybody happy, but we know that that's impossible sometimes, right? So what's the procedure and process for if someone does have a concern about a bus stop or about anything that happens in regards to transportation? Well, ultimately, you know, the bus stops with me. Whether it's the bus route, the bus driver, the bus itself, um, I should receive all those phone calls or emails myself. My extension is 7950, and if someone wants to reach out to me by email, it's mpress at pem.org. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mike. No problem. I'm going to wish you a happy and uh, safe school year. And, uh, again, it, it, the work that, that's put in to providing transportation for 5,000 students is, is uh, to me, unimaginable. To, to do that each and every day to transport those kids each and every day and I don't think think folks know even about the out, out of district students that you have to transport also and uh, and also I, th I think the public needs to be aware of the bus shortage statewide and nationwide so we're trying to, to hire you've been trying to hire more more folks to have more routes to have more accommodations but you're also limited in that fact too so I want to commend you for okay. trying to get people in here and then in increase our capacity to extend our services to our to our families and we got plenty of applications here if anybody wants to apply as a bus driver that's good and they also can apply on Apple track online right. Right? And we do training here to uh, obtain your CDL that's right Sunday Pittman right uh, absolutely okay great well that's the second part of our of our inside outlook in this edition and so if you're connecting the dots, you're looking at what's most important to, our, to us and to you as the parent is our children and having them safe. So you saw Mr. Bowen and he talked about safety and security and how important it was. And he said he closed with reach out to him if you have any questions in regards to anything you might see or hear and bring that to light. We need, we need everybody's eyes out there helping us. And then closing with Mr. Press, he closed with the same thing. If you have any issues with transportation, please reach out to him. Thank you and see you next time in the next edition of Inside Outlook.